LG's G line goes up against the Nexus. It's Joshua Vagar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is the brand new LG G5 up against the Nexus 6P in this quick look. Metal is really the name of the game here as we have metal unibody designs across the board here. The LG G5 now brings a very different design from previous iterations, especially doing away with the back button layout and also the curved designs that used to permeate the G4 and also the G Flex line. Still, it feels quite nice in the hand, mostly because it is a bit shrunken down with the 5.3 inch display, uh, but in one hand, you are able to get from one side to the other quite easily. Now, in terms of handling, the Nexus 6P is a little bit tougher to handle in one hand because its 5.7 inch screen makes it overall a bit larger and it also has the front facing speakers which add some girth on the top and bottom. As far as design goes, the Nexus 6P does have that black bar on the top that houses a lot of the bits and pieces, including the camera. And on the LG G5, it still has the camera on the back that has now two lenses underneath that area. The back power button is basically where you would put your finger for the fingerprint reader, and you just have to press that button, leave the finger on there, and you're good to go. But on the Nexus 6P, you still have that little bit of design with the circular um, fingerprint reader on the back that will trigger when you do have your finger just laying on that area. In terms of display, the Spec Hungry will be pretty happy here because both of these displays have Quad HD resolution despite some differences in their size and construction. The Nexus 6P has a 5.7 inch AMOLED screen, so the colors do pop out just that little bit and everything has been incredibly fun, whether it be media, gaming, or text. On the LG G5, it's an IPS display, which does a pretty good job in broad daylight, and it is, again, Quad HD resolution, this time at 5.3 inches in the screen. Now, overall, handling might be the thing that makes you go to the LG G5 because of its slightly smaller overall body compared to the Nexus 6P, and part of that is because of the smaller display. Now, performance is where we're going to find the updates in the LG G5 because it comes with the Snapdragon 820 backed by the Adreno 530 and 4GB of RAM. On the other hand, the Nexus 6P is rocking the Snapdragon 810 with the Adreno 430 and 3GB of RAM. Now, the Spec Hungry will definitely go for the LG G5, but the Nexus 6P has been proving that the Snapdragon 810 is still able to uh, provide really good performance, especially when backed by the Android Marshmallow Stock Edition that is found in the Nexus. Hardware is really where the LG G5 is going to pull ahead of a lot of different phones. But first we'll talk about the Nexus 6P, which does have that fingerprint reader on the back and now uses USB Type-C for its connector to do some very quick charging. It does have all of the different connections underneath the surface, so everything that you need to do, including NFC, is available. And the battery comes in at 3450 milliamp hours, which has provided a lot of longevity for about a day to, a, to two days worth of uh, moderate to heavy usage. And even with Android Marshmallow's Doze feature, it is able to sit down and just sip on the power rather than let it just trickle away. The LG G5, on the other hand, does have the conventional uh, internals, uh, but its battery is 2800 milliamp hours, which is significantly less. But of course, we have the modular design, which might be able to add even more milliamp hours to that battery. But it's when you pop out the bottom panel and slide the battery out that you can see the expandability options of the G5. You can replace the battery if you need uh, more power, and then the battery that you remove can be slotted into other modules, which will then add further functionality. Now, the example mainly that we had for you in a future focus is the camera module, which is able to provide hardware buttons and controls for the camera experience, as well as a grip and an expanded battery at 1200 milliamp hours, bringing the grand total to 4000. Expandability is really where LG is trying to think outside of the box, where the general smartphone seems to have stagnated. Now we want to have even better functionality by providing some extra features in a bunch of different modules that even third party manufacturers are going to make. And LG has told us that they are going to make it available so that the experiences can be vastly different depending on what it is you want to add. Speaking of the camera module, we did use it to take a look at the cameras of the LG G5. And yes, I said cameras because there are the two lenses on the back where one of them is the more conventional 16 megapixel shooter with an 8 megapixel shooter also available that comes with a 135 degree field of view. Now you are able to fairly seamlessly move between the two when you're zooming in and out on the viewfinder so that you can provide even more coverage in your picture uh, rather than having to really just move back using the conventional lens. 
It has all of the different modes, including manual controls that you would expect from the G4 and the V10. And uh, really, the finite control makes it really easy to cater the shot to what you need it to be. But even in the auto mode or even the simple mode, it still performs quite amicably and has good laser autofocus speed. On the other hand, laser autofocus is also on the Nexus 6P, but its camera app is a little bit different. Uh, the picture quality of the Nexus 6P has proven to be very good in the past and continues to be so even with these new phones coming out. But its 12.3 megapixel shooter uh, does provide a lot of good um, low light performance because the pixels happen to be of a larger size. Now we are obviously going to put these two phones in a camera shootout, so make sure you stay tuned for that when we get our hands on an LG G5 review unit and really pit the pictures against one another. And finally, in software, we have a bit of a development here as uh, the Nexus 6P does have the stock Android iteration, the Android Marshmallow that we all know and love. Uh, that includes everything from the app drawer to the notification dropdown, quick settings, and everything that stock Android provides. But the LG G5 with its GUI has moved forward, uh, at least in their eyes, and has removed the app drawer, saying that under market research, they found that a lot of people found elements of the app drawer to be convoluted or confusing, and a lot of users are looking for a more streamlined experience. Now, whether or not you agree with what LG has done with their operating systems, it seems that this might actually become a trend in the coming year. Uh, so until then, you can see how LG has actually stripped away a lot of the features from the GUI, including the Q slide and even the dual window, which we were not able to find in the G5's software. And it is feeling like these two phones, despite the app drawer being that difference, are actually a little bit closer in terms of feature sets this time around. As the LG GUI has happened to be quite saturated in the past, it is now a much more minimal experience. And so there you have it for this look at the LG G5 and the Nexus 6P. These are two incredibly powerful phones from two different ways of thinking. The Nexus 6P is the, let's say, bare bones phone that provides in sheer power with Android Marshmallow and all of the updates that the Nexus will provide. And it comes in a sleek body as well. The LG G5 changes radically its design, but does so in the case of providing even more functions because of its modular design. And we're excited to see where that particularly goes for LG flagship. So keep it tuned to Android Authority for even more about the LG G5 and stay tuned for the verses and the camera shootouts between these two once we get our hands on proper LG G5 review units. So keep it tuned here because we are your source for all things MWC 2016.